Hey, Funnel Builders, how we doing, Mike here? Uh, I am currently uh, broadcasting live, and we're going to talk about where I host customer funnels and how I kind of do all of the stuff. Um, if you're watching, say hello. I'm only using one screen at the moment. I promised I'd get this video out uh, to Ramon. Um, yesterday, he posted... Uh, a very good question about where we put everything. And unfortunately, we've just had a super, super busy day. Um, I did that classic thing where I recorded a load of content and it turns out the microphone was on mute. So I was like, do you know what? I'm going to go do some uh, YouTube videos instead or Facebook videos. So if you're watching the live version, say hello. I might not be able to spend too much time on it because I've got a Hey, hey, Mark, how you doing? Um, because I'm having to kind of use one screen. So I'll jump backwards and forwards. Uh, hey guys, how's it going? Um, but I will, uh, I will also um, be in the comments afterwards when I kind of post this and publish it. We're going to jump into the whiteboard a minute. If you're watching the replay, just type the word hosting in the comments and then I'll kind of catch up with you guys. I absolutely love seeing what you guys get up to. Um, let me quickly <clears throat> this now in live. Uh, cool. So where's my whiteboard? That's here. What I'm going to do is, where have you gone? There we go. Share the screen. It's going to be a bit weird because it'll be me first. So it'll be a bit mirrored. Yeah, I know. Very close to 4,000 subs, which I'm very happy with, which is kind of awesome. Here we go. Cool. So this here is our whiteboard, and hopefully you guys can see this okay. I'm not sure what the light is doing behind me, but like I said, I had to do this a little bit later than I was expecting. But anyway, the question was, in fact, actually, let's jump into the question first. Uh, Ramon asks, hi, where do you implement funnels in the customer's hosting website or using a separate hosting service like lead pages or click funnels, etc.? What if the customer already has a website? This is a fantastic question. And I'm really glad that Ramon asked this. Again, I was surprised that I hadn't done any content on this before this. I could have sworn that I had done, uh, but apparently not. So fine. Um, here's what we've got. So first of all, I want to divide this up into a few different kind of areas. Um, things like lead pages, you know, or click funnels or whatever, those are funnel platforms. Um, and they are closed systems. Okay. They do work with other websites, but they are essentially closed platforms. Uh, and we'll talk about that in a minute. minute. Then we have a website, obviously which is uh, obviously hosted wherever you want to host that. For example, we host ours on WP Engine. And you then have a funnel. So the reality is that your website is your funnel. I think I mentioned to Lee Jackson ages ago, like all a funnel really is is a website that's doing its job. A marketing funnel is just a way of getting people who don't know you and have no idea that you exist and move them through a process into becoming a happy, profitable, repeat customer that refers you to their friends. So those are the four qualifiers. Happy, profitable, repeat customer that refers you to their friends. So on one side there, you know, they don't know that you exist. We pull them through, through ads, traffic, Google remarketing, blog posts, videos, podcasts, lead magnets, upsells, one-click sales, one-time offers, products, core offers, uh, hyper-profit customers, you know, we go through that process, right? Here's, here, so this is how I, I've kind of laid this out. Funnel platforms, there are dozens of them. If you have a funnel platform, they'll take care of everything. They're going to charge you uh, probably in the region of 197 a month. It, it's sometimes higher, sometimes lower. Regardless, it doesn't actually matter. The problem is, is that this is a third-party platform. And if you read the fine print, they're very, very sneaky. And a lot of the times, they'll actually own your copy and content. They don't tell you this, but a lot of times they'll own your copy and content. Some of them don't. Some of them do. The, the main problem I have with this is that I'm basically putting all of my eggs in their basket. Some people have said, oh, yeah, you can just kind of split out click funnel accounts or lead pages accounts. Their agency models are changing all the time. Um, and I think it's kind of 
uh, dangerous to be with something like that. Only recently, ClickFunnels had a pretty severe outage uh, and a data breach, which is, you know, it happens, right? It happens all the time. I'm not having a go at them specifically. I just personally don't want to put anything on, especially for my customers, especially for myself, on another person's platform. If they've already got a website, that's fine because their website is probably going to have stuff like about us, uh, contact. Some people call these marketing websites. Some people, people call them brochure websites. I like if you go to my site, my site doesn't have your standard like contact page or anything like that. I'll show you a, a website example that's really good is Mr. Miles Beckler, of course. Mark, if you're still watching, you know. Um, this here is probably an example of like the best type of website that you could have. It focuses a lot on content. There's a lot on categories of content. There's a little bit about him. You can get free courses, which is basically his um, his you know, opt-in page, there's blog posts, there's podcasts, there's resources, a little bit about him, some disclaimers, terms of service, all that kind of shit. There's no reason why the website, the main facing website, milesbeckler.com, sellyourservice.com, whatever it might be, is straight away the funnel. And for hours, we like to be, uh, we don't, you know, do that. We use Beaver Builder. Some people use, um, uh, Elementor or whatever, but it's hosted on our platform and we use WP Engine. And if they've already got a site, that's absolutely fine because if they've already built their site on something like Beaver Builder or Elementor or Divi, we can still add funnel based pages to their website. Let's say that they've got a, uh, a pretty standard website. We'll come back to that in a minute with, uh, so that's your home page. And they've got, you know, the classic things like about and contact. Uh, maybe they even have a blog, you know, although it's unlikely. Um, and they've got a site like that. There's no reason that you as a funnel builder aren't able to come in and say, cool, that stuff works really well. We're actually going to build for you a landing page or squeeze page. Uh, we're also going to do an upsell page. We're going to do a one-time offer page. We're going to do a sales page, you know, and you build those pages into their funnel predominantly, sorry, into their website predominantly designed to actually work more like this. There's no reason why you can't add that into it. If you're doing a full website design and when we kind of called ourselves a website agency, we were building funnels. People just didn't know that they were funnels. I was like, yeah, about pages are useful. Contact pages are useful. But in truth, we want a way to like a squeeze page to be able to like get people to sign up. We want a sales page. We want sales letters. We want sales content. And we hosted that. We host all of ours on WP Engine. Again, like whatever host you're using, if it works for you, fantastic. If, however, and this is where we tend to split it. If the customer has a front facing website, and we had to do this for a few customers, um, you know, WP Elevation have done this. Um, and, you know, it's using subdomains essentially. And this is why I don't want to fully bash pe people like um, lead pages and, and click funnels and stuff, because it can work in tandem with your website. These two can work together by having a, a funnel. Um, and we do this for telco sites, insurance sites, whatever. They'd have their main domain. So this is the main domain, you know, like website.com. And then we would have something like go.website.com. And it might be that their... Um, uh, their current website is built on a framework that we don't think we could we could you know add to. A lot of customers didn't build with Beaver Builder, and they might have even built with still WordPress and like Divi or Salient or something. And I was like, I'm not going to use that because I don't know enough about it. We don't have enough time and resources to support that. So we'll allow you to keep that, but we will build a subdomain. We'll host it still on our platform. So they still have to pay for full hosting and we'll build the funnel and it will just be, you know, a squeeze page. It will just be uh, a sales page. It will just be a checkout page or a cart page. And we will separate out those pages on the site and there won't even necessarily be a main site go.website.com would probably just be straight away to the, the squeeze page but then go.com forward slash you know uh, product 
um, would be through to the uh, to the sales page, and we would just have links. And it means that on a subdomain, one, it doesn't impact their site at all. Some of our customers had a lot of traffic through to their website. If they were particularly a media-based company, they get a lot of traffic through to their website. And funnels, you know, they, they can be pretty heavy loading. So they, people might not necessarily want there to be a huge amount of um, content like funnel content on their site. They might want to redirect them away to a, uh, a subdomain. The second way that we do that, and this is like kind of going another level deep, is that we will then have something like uh, members.website.com. And this will then be where the checkout page, so that's supposed to be a shopping cart, if you can't tell from that glyph, that shopping cart actually comes through to an order form on the uh, members website. That's another subdomain. The reason we do that, still hosted by WP Engine, um, even if they host their main site on GoDaddy or Bluehost or whatever, you can host wherever you want. And, and it's it's well worth it. It's site ground, do very good hosting. You want to put that that website on another uh, you can put it on another host and have that website on another subdomain i cannot tell you the headaches that were saved as soon as we separated out our funnel and our membership so whatever attracts and makes sales and, and moves people through the process as the funnel as one site now for sell your service that is sellyourservice.co.uk we don't have a front-facing website that's a traditional website it's basically just a funnel site all built with Beaver Builder. And then we would have the purchases so where people buy products goes to members. Uh, it's actually gameplan.sellyourservice.com.co.uk. So it's on a subdomain. As soon as we separated those two things out, ah, oh, my life was made so much easier. Everything worked much better. We could connect to our CRMs much easier. Uh, the, the membership software tends to have uh, a lot of conflicts with, you know, um, squeeze page and page building software. You know, typically they didn't work very well together. It also just eases site load. Like our site is getting you know, kind of like 10,000 visits a month. Our membership website obviously gets a lot less than that, but has a lot more content. So I don't want people kind of having all that traffic going to there because it's going to be a strain on our service. So that is how um, we basically build um, our platforms out. I tend to stay away from um, pages like this because I believe I can build my own funnels with my own kind of setups and systems. And that's why we have our marketing funnel certification. It just teaches you how to build those marketing funnels um, from customers. So yeah, let me jump back into StreamYard and see if we've got any questions. I hope that was uh, useful. Uh, bah, 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 bah. Feed the cats, keep building those funnels. Cheers, man. No worries. Uh, John, hi, Mike. Just stopping in to say thanks for all the great marketing content. Really enjoy the stuff you're putting out. Can't stay now, but we'll definitely watch later. Thank you so much. John, I massively appreciate that. That's very good of you to say so. Hey, Chris, how you doing? Uh, love segmenting sites like this. Makes life a lot easier. Chris, I could not agree with you more. I We basically, this is like in the bad old days, we used to use Optimize Press. I think it was even Optimize Press 2.0. And I had that as my kind of page builders and templates and stuff like that. And then I tried to use... Um, uh, maybe member press or wish list members. I can't even remember like uh, final press pro or whatever, like member pro. And they're all great membership plugins, but they really conflicted. Optimized Press, frankly, was a piece of shit. Like, it really didn't work. But even when we use something like Beaver Builder, which I think is very light and works very well, I just found that there were too many conflicts. And I was like, and someone basically said to me, man, you need to separate out your member site and separate out your your, your funnel site. Um, and that was kind of the easiest way to do it. If you're setting up a subdomain, how do you get the host information and password to set up for the client? Ask them for it. They should know that. Um, you could even do a, a who is domain lookup and just see where the registrar is. So they should just be able to send that to you. It's it's honestly not a, as complex. To be honest, hosting really isn't my bag. I have someone take care of that for me now. Um, but it's basically <coughs> you need you need uh, C name and name C name and A records, uh, and they'll send that to you. But if you go to your host, so if you go to where you want to host it, like I have WP Engine, and I just say, hey, I want to host a customer's subdomain uh, with a new 
name, what do I need? They'll tell you everything you need. I wouldn't worry too much about that. That's that's pretty simple to do. Cool, guys. I'm going to jump off because I've still got video content to record. Like I said, I didn't, um, <laughs> I didn't, I had it on mute, which drove me absolutely bananas. Thank you so much for checking this content out. Uh, I will get back to doing regular videos and not just as many whiteboard videos. Although I do quite like doing them, I feel like the production quality isn't quite there. In the meantime, I will speak to you all later. Thank you so much. Uh, have courage, uh, commit, and take action. Cheers, guys. Speak to you later. Bye now.